Hello there. Welcome to an all-new Eggert's Hoho's Company podcast or training presentation. This setup is kind of unique and a first for us, if you couldn't tell already. This is John Patino uh, presenting this program on behalf of the Board of Directors, the Firematic Board, and Chief Elect Gentry. Uh, we decided to put this together to broadcast information to members uh, in a more efficient manner. Uh, rather than getting together for meetings and getting people together that are on varied schedules, we're going to present things uh, a little more in a uh, flexible format. This format uh, in this presentation is for the Eggertsville Host Company hours-based membership program. Uh, today we're going to review the policy. We're going to go over some expectations by the fire district. They played a big role in getting this program rolled out uh, and getting it, us to where we are to be able to actually sign members up to uh, start the program. Uh, the program is going to be uh, uh, first of its kind, obviously, for Eggertsville, uh, but we actually were able to build this over the last year, uh, working with resources from other departments in Western New York and throughout the country. Uh, there's a lot of flexible membership programs that are out there, but this one seemed like it would be good for Eggertsville because of the vast amount of experience that we have uh, in our exempt ranks. Uh, we have exempt firefighters that live all over the country, uh, but most uh, specifically here in Western New York, that can come back to the fire station, be part of the Eggertsville family like they always are, but also continue to be an active firefighter and play a big role uh, to fill the needs that we really have today. Uh, some of those expectations that we have, uh, we're gonna have a lot offered by uh, giving members the ability to be an active firefighter again, uh, but you're gonna be really giving, uh, giving a good effort, uh, hopefully to put back into the program so that we can build upon it uh, prove the concept because it is new and we need to prove that it actually works, uh, make any adjustments that are necessary to the structure of the program, and hopefully build upon it in the future with more firefighters. Uh, we do have a pilot uh, group of firefighters that we are looking to send it to um, and to enroll into it. Um, that's probably why you're viewing today's presentation. Uh, with this being a virtual presentation, uh, there's a couple different ways you can have questions uh, and get the answers to any questions you may have. Uh, you can call me, obviously, at any time, 716-818-0022, email uh, or text message at any time, um, or you can get uh, Chief Gentry or any of the officers uh, at any time. Uh, you can also get any of us at the I Am Responding app, and you can message any firefighters in the company. So we'll go on to the program, go through some of the uh, different uh, features of it. Uh, the hours-based membership program. Uh, it's, the purpose is to provide the Eggertsville Host Company with active firefighters on duty to respond to alarms. One of the unique features of the volunteer fire service is that we respond to alarms from our home, typically, or when we're out in the community. By having our hours-based members uh, be at the station, it puts uh, butts in the seats, as we like to say, to get people to respond to a call in a quick and efficient manner. Uh, it's also going to allow us the ability to permit long-tenured members the ability to serve active duty with the fire company. Uh, not many fire departments have a large group of exempt firefighters like we do that are trained and ready to serve at a moment's notice. And that's uh, the time is now to try to draw on that experience. So the process, you have to not resign in the Eggersville Fire District at this time or its vicinity. Uh, you have to complete 15 years of service uh, or uh, if you were part of the eight-year parameter, Basically, if you're still a member of the fire company and you live outside the district, you have met that uh, uh, requirement because you're able to go exempt. Um, you need to be in good standing, obviously. One of the processes uh, as well that needs to be in place is you need to possess a valid CPR and a basic first aid card uh, for being an active firefighter, which we have for our complete roster at this time, not just for uh, actives uh, of any type have to have a basic first aid and a CPR certification. So you will get that, uh, not necessarily uh, the day you sign up to be uh, an hours based firefighter, but very shortly thereafter, we'll have training uh, developed as well. Our CPR policy states that we'll offer that multiple times per year. Um, you must either be a department qualified interior firefighter or a department qualified driver on apparatus um, or both. Um, it does not read all apparatus. We understand that there may be some challenges to drive some of the larger units, but at least Rescue 7 and some of the smaller units uh, it helps to have a driver in the firehouse for silence and other calls, and obviously to get the truck ready to go. Must also be a member in good standing. Obviously, to be a member in good standing, it's a big part of our service. 
um, when you seek to become an hours member. You must submit notice to the chief or president, a written request to become an hours member, and we have several firefighters that have already and looking forward to working with you. So what's offered? An hours member shall, in addition to satisfy the requirements, um, meet all the requirements of the bylaws, be eligible for benefits on active members, so you are eligible for service awards, your length of service awards, um, both the pension LOSAP program that the fire district provides and the program that the host company provides on your years of service. Um, and those are both uh, by meeting the parameters that are required. The years of service in the host company is measured on a year by year basis and it's measured by the executive board of who commits to being a contributing member of the host company. The length of service uh, award program or retirement program that the fire district offered is based upon uh, calls and points that are given um, and your 20 hours or your hours that you're going to put in th at the station will allow you to garner those points. And we'll get into some details about that in a moment. Uh, to be eligible for the benefits, uh, you must uh, are also eligible to hold office so long as you meet the eligibility requirements. For example, you can obviously hold executive office. At this time, you cannot hold firematic office residing outside the district. Hours members also, each month, uh, or excuse me, annually, shall complete 20 duty hours each month, credited by filling out a work detail call sheet, describing uh, what they did and, and that they were standing by at the station, and entering it into the daily logbook. Pretty familiar uh, environment for anyone that's been in Eggertsville for any period of time. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, you must also attend 12 drills per year. That's the same requirement as all active firefighters. You must also attend the annual open house, big part of our, our annual public relations to our community. Uh, is our annual open house, so that's part of this program as well. You must also attend one parade per year. We attend multiple parades per year. Obviously, you know Erie County Fair, Memorial Day, Old Home Days. One of those parades you must attend each year. Uh, it's a big part of getting Eggertsville out in the community, and we need to see our firefighters there. During this presentation, we reviewed the policy. Basically, this uh, presentation is, is the policy. I'm going to email out the policy attached to this presentation as well. Um, some of the fire district expectations that they have, obviously that you adhere to the policy, that you have an uh, affirmative obligation to respond to calls, that you present yourself accordingly as a professional volunteer firefighter. Um, our pilot members that are involved in the program, hopefully that they engage in the program and do a great job. To give you a little bit of a, a synopsis on, on what you can look for, um, did, we did some studies on how you can attain your service awards or your uh, LOSAP retirement points for the year. Uh, currently in December of 2015, uh, or excuse me, December of 2017, where we are right now, um, you would need to make 32 fires and 51 EMS calls to receive your service awards for this year. Um, so as you can see with over 1,200 calls a year, sometimes six to seven calls a day, putting in 20 hours per month at the station, uh, it could be pretty simple for you to get those calls in and those points in uh, relatively uh, easily. However, if you're unable to as part of your 20 hours, you are able to get additional points by going to calls outside those 20 hours uh, at, at other events or while you're out and about at the station or in the area. So you will be an active firefighter, but the 20 hours per month that you're spending are part of your hours obligation. Once again, this short presentation was in lieu of bringing everybody into a meeting, sitting down and talking about things. Uh, because of how busy everybody is, we want to take advantage of your flexibility as well. Uh, but also, we want to make sure that we answer anybody's questions. So on, once again, if you have any questions, you can email back uh, to the chief uh, elect, uh, uh, Gentry, or myself, uh, or call us or text us at any time, uh, or let us know at any meeting if you have any questions. Obviously, our goal is to get this program up and running by January 1st. Uh, and get you guys physicals and uh, get everyone returned to active duty uh, if you're willing to participate in the program. So thank you for your, pres uh, your attentiveness to this program and look forward to talking to you in the future. Have a good day.